All right, here we go again. Hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. We've got a lot to be thankful for, especially in 2020. This project is about two and a half years in the making from when I first went to the site. So shout out to B and his family for keeping us in mind when it was time to get started. As you can tell, there was a slide on this hillside, pretty much where the brown tarp is. The good thing is nothing happened to the house and the family was safe. So here's a side note. Whenever you're doing infill, especially on a hillside, you want to make sure that it's compacted. There's a link below explaining how compaction works. So the first thing is taking down the old pressure treated retaining wall, which we made quick work of. We then established our height of the wall, which was about 7 feet for about 25 feet. And the final 20 feet was about 6 feet. We ended up removing about 60 yards of dirt and 15 yards of concrete using a Bobcat MT55 because of the tight access. Of course, no job goes without its problems. Look closely here, and you can see the hydraulic codes pop loose. So we had to load everything by hand, which was okay, we needed the workout anyway. At least I did. Shout out to All Star Rent in San Pablo for getting us another MT55 within two hours. So once we got our elevations for the concrete footing, we were able to make some adjustments in the field because of the hard rock. The engineer went from six and a half feet wide footing to about five and a half feet wide. And the keyway, which you see here, went from about three and a half feet to two and a half feet deep, 12 inches wide. We ended up using our brand new Makita jackhammer to dig the keyway. The other one finally went out on us after about 10 years in business. So now it's time for us to frame the back of the wall. Here you can see our main stakes are approximately five feet on center. By the rock being so hard, we have to pre-drill some holes using our Makita rotor hammer for us to hammer our stakes and kickers in. This process can be time consuming. We make up that time by using a duplex nailer as opposed to a hammer. It is a challenge when working behind the wall. We have to make sure each kicker is secure. And this too can be time consuming. Now that we got the back established, it's time for some rebar. Normally we use number 5 rebar on our projects, but on this project we use number 6 rebar, 12 inches on center, for the wall and footing. We use these duplex nails to tie the verticals, and then we add our horizontals. This makes for a strong rebar mat that will not shift during the pour. And this is the time where we make up a lot of work if we're running behind by using our rebar tying gun. I call it the Terminator. It took one ton of rebar to complete this project. So now it's time for us to close up the front. As we build up, we use what are called WT8. The WT stands for wall ties and the 8 stands for 8 inches. 
They're held together using a wedge. This along with our two x four stakes helps close and secure the wall during the concrete pour. Once the stakes are established in front, they basically start stacking the two by 12s, one by one, till we get to the top. Again, the first 20, 25 feet, I believe, was about seven feet, and this last 20 feet was approximately six feet high. And these are all Douglas fir two by 12s, by 20 for the most part, and we did have to step it up where we went to seven feet. We treat these two by 12s like little babies now. Price has literally doubled since about June. Here's a quick look inside before we pour the concrete. Now it's time for some concrete. Normally when we pour our retaining walls, we start with the footing first, and then we start pouring on the wall. We normally go about six, eight inches all the way down, come back up another six, eight inches. This gives the concrete time to settle. Settle. We also use a concrete vibrator here. This helps us eliminate any air pockets in the concrete. While I did get a lot of footage of us pouring the concrete wall, it's really not much to see since it's all in the inside and it's not going to be a finished concrete wall. If you want to see a finished concrete wall, check out our last video and that was a broom finished concrete wall. Now it's time for us to strip the wall. Pretty straightforward. Remove all the nails, remove all the wedges, and the board should just pop off. It does take teamwork from bringing them from the back to the front. Once we get them to the front, we just load them up onto the truck and on to the next job. So yeah, that wraps it up for this video. Definitely appreciate you guys' time. Remember to stay positive, hang around people that are positive, and 2020 is almost over. If you're in the Sacramento Bay Area, hit us up. The link is below. Make it a good one.